Ed Friedland, the bass whisperer here for Guitar World magazine showing you the awe-inspiring Phil Jones flight case amplifier. 150 watts of bone-crushing power. It's massive size. It's... Oh, stop. We done with this prop here? The key to success with this amp is understanding how it was designed to work. Now, it's not a big, huge amp with lots of power that's going to throw the sound out. It's small, it's light, and it's designed to create more of an ambient sound of your instrument in an acoustic space. Very important is to put the amp on the floor, which gives you the low frequency response. Now there's these three bass tubes in the front, which really extend the low frequency response in the cabinet, and these two speakers throw the sound out to the front. The problem with most cabinets of this size is that the sound is blown past your ankles and you really can't hear what you're getting. That's why these upward facing speakers are so ingenious. They send the sound directly up to your ear so you're able to get the low frequency response off the stage plus hear yourself quite clearly. It kind of works the same principle as how you would hide your subwoofer in a home theater system. You'll stick that subwoofer off in a corner and yet it sounds like the bass is coming directly at you because the sound wave is very omnidirectional. Another very important factor is how far you place the amp from the wall. I'm about three inches from the back wall. Now as I move it out from the wall, now it's about two feet from the wall. You can hear the low end drops off quite a bit. Now I'm about 8 inches from the wall. You can hear how the different distances from the back wall change the low frequency response, which in effect allows you to tune the amp based on where you place it in the room. Alright, let's take a little look at the feature set on the Phil Jones flight case. We have our input here. This is an input volume level, which in the center is considered unity gain, which means whatever the gain of the instrument you've put in is the gain level that you're getting. This is the amp set totally flat at unity gain with an active five string bass also set flat. As you can hear it handles the low B very nicely. Now we can add gain. At this much gain boost, you're bound to overdrive the input if you play hard. So we go into active mode. You lose some gain, but you also lose the overdrive on the input. Here's a low bass control, which fattens up the E and B string. bass fattens up the D and G strings nicely. The low mids dialing in, some finger style presence. The high mids gives a little cut. flight case doesn't have a tweeter and so the treble control is tuned at a fairly high 12k which brings in a really nice sparkle for slap. First let's hear it flat. Now add some treble. If you start pushing the amp hard you're going to want to use the limiter limiter is set to squash at a 3 to 1 ratio. You can see the blue light just barely coming on now. As we dial it in more, we can get more compression. Because of the ratio, it doesn't ever really completely squash your sound. Let's hear it totally maxed out. You 
can hear it squishing a little bit, but then again, this is set for maximum. Even still, it's a musical sounding limiter. Also available from Phil Jones Bass is a line of high-end audio cables, both speaker wires and instrument cables. Presented very nicely, Sia, your cable. Now let's give the cables a shot here. First, I'm going to play a little bit using a standard cable, and we'll see if you can hear the difference between standard and Phil Jones high-end audio cable. First, the standard cable. Now here's the Phil Jones cable. Once again, the standard cable. Once again, the Phil Jones. Sounds a little thicker around the middle to me, not a little bit punchier down there. One application that the flight case really excels at is acoustic bass amplification. I've taken this out on two gigs now with a full quartet with drums and it's held its own very well. Having these speakers puts the sound right in your ear, whereas the front speakers face out to the audience and these ports help with the low frequency extension. Now the input is 4.7 mega ohm which is considered good for piezo pickups like the kind you find in an acoustic bass. However, this particular pickup, uh, the Fishman Full Circle, I find sounds best if I use a little buffer preamp in front of it. It helps uh, match the impedance signal up with the input. Plus, I also use a microphone on my bass, which makes it essential to have this box to blend the two signals. But as you can hear, the sound's very natural. Mm -hmm. 